is the hand crank bridge. Thank you. Hey guys. Where are we supposed to be? Well, it's not in the water. Here we go, we're moving. Everything here again will be classic, what is 250 to 900 AD. 30 feet underground is where the pre-classic was found, 1100 BC to 250 AD. Mm. So with that said, we kind of give you population census today. There is basically 466,000 people in the last legal census a couple of years back, unofficially still half a million without all the people from Guatemala living and working illegally. But keep in mind, we cover 8,867 square miles and the same footage back in the Maya time, 6850, the rise and fall, it is speculated about 2.5 million Mayas were here. We'll be going up along the road here. Now, when you see this, this is a road. There'd be one over here. And of course, in Northern, there was three Sakbe, S-A-C-B-E. Sakbes are known as ancient road or white roads, like what you're standing on. Look over to the side behind Jason, you'll see it's a little bit higher than the average ground. So a sakbe would have been about a foot or two foot high and 15 to 20 feet wide. And this basically was the barrier. If you're in here, you're elite. If you're outside, you're a commoner. So if you didn't have permission to cross into this, you're looking for war or death. So we have had this structure, like I mentioned, dated around 775 AD. And this would actually have a roof at the very top of it. The roof would be made from the same core built from the same Cahoon palm. And the Mayans only knew to make their roof in one way, which would be a core belt arch form, okay? So they would take the Cahoon palm, put it at the very top, and this would all have room, two throne rooms, okay? And bedrooms in there, okay? You notice how the structure looks like? It has more mortar than inner fill, okay? A few years ago, in the 1980s, we have had the University of Pennsylvania was given over $2 million to construct sites here in Central America. Hmm. They first started over in Tikal and then ended up here. So, archaeologists believe that the staircase you see behind me once came out all the way up to where you see the area here where the drain runs. Okay? So, but because of lack of space, lack of time, and lack of money, they chopped it right in, okay? It is believed that the tallest Mayan would have been five feet to about five two. So going up these staircases, you will find out that the staircases will be getting a little bit steeper as we go up, especially when we head to the El Castillo, which is the main structure. So if I would access these buildings, this is how I would have to go up. Oh, wow. Like showing respect wow. to the ruler. So it's like a sort of bowing down. See? That's crazy. So you're gonna, if you notice how high it is, yeah. See? These staircases going up. At home, we can just run up our staircases. Sure, right. These staircases, especially the El Castillo, you're gonna notice that you would have to look down. They were built in a sort of like defensive. Region. So they're high enough that if you are five foot or five two, you would have to crawl up anyway and be oh, in a yeah. position where you're supplicating. They were specifically built like this. Yeah, to so make sure that the person was in a respectful down. position. Okay. Yes, sir. So I wow. would have to come ask the ruler for, for um, permission to head over to the site. But well, what do you think, Queen Krista? Should we, should we move forward on our throne here? <laughs> so the administrator then would, would sit here and would spend his time here, would sleep and yeah, so and he wouldn't, would he wouldn't like really guards. move a lot from this area. Yeah, and they wow. would spend their 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 time. They would have guards. Okay. As soon as you get here, you would have guards guarding them. Wow. So if you weren't like allowed to enter into the site, they would just strike you right down by. Okay? Wow. Right where we're accessing the staircase here in the time of the Mayans, only the high class royalties, elites, were able to access the staircase. Okay. 
So right now, going up here, we're all like high-class people <laughs> entering to the um, center of the city. This is our national tree, okay, the mahogany tree or caoba. And this is actually the only tree that appears on our Belize flag. Have you seen our Belize flag? Yes. Okay. Our Belize flag is royal blue with one horizontal red stripe. One at the top, one at the bottom. Around that, in the center, there's a shade of white. That shade of white represents or has representation of leaves in the center. If you would happen to count our Belize flag, the leaves inside, it's known as the coat of arms. And if you would happen to count those leaves, it gives you a total of 50 leaves, representing the 50 years of hardship that mahogany formed the basis of Belize's economy. Hmm. In the 18th and 19th century, mahogany formed the basis of Belize's economy. And that represents the same 50 leaves here. Okay, in the center of that 50 leaves, you have two creole men. One, a dark creole and a brown creole. One would be holding a paddle in the left hand. On the right, he, the next one would be holding a beating axe. They would be supporting a shield. That shield is divided into three sections. In the left and right has tools of a timber industry. At the bottom has a ship in full sail representing the Caribbean Sea. And at the very bottom of that shield has a motor scroll saying, Sub umbro florio. It's a Latin word meaning under the shade we flourish. And above that shield rises the same mahogany tree here. See? So our national tree of Belize. The Mayans did sacrifices, offerings over to the gods. The Mayans also did um, bloodletting offerings, especially to the gods, Kinich Ahau, um, also to talk the rain god. For example, if they were sending down rain for a few days and wanted the rain to stop, this is when they would come, make their offerings over to the gods. So in the center here, if you notice, it has like a round stone, what used to be um, a round stone. It is known as an altar. We have altar and we have stellas here at these sites. So this is an altar, piece of round rock, and then stella in the background. Mm. The stella was found um, at the front of most of these structures. Here at Shenantanich, we had there was a finding of over 13 stellas. Out of these 13 stellas, only three have been able to been carved out. So in this area here, this room, the Mayans did the bloodletting. And down here, the Mayans would gather like bush sticks, anything that can be easily ignited. And they would start piercing parts of their bodies. For the Mayans, the piercing or the, the bloodletting had to be painful. So what the Mayans would do, they would pierce their ears, their thumbs, their tongues. For the males would be the first layer of their penis. For the females would be their nipples. Around here, this is what they would do, the bloodletting. They would then light it up so the smoke rises up into the heavens and conduct their prayers, asking for to send out rain or to send down sun. <laughs> structure at Trinantanich known as the El Castillo rises 132 feet high okay this structure here is made up out of three different levels first level rises to where the staircases stop okay and you see the doorways if we would happen to count these doorways again the Mayans never made image of um, buildings they made image of the same Saiba tree so the doorways if we would count them it has 13 doorways Right behind where the tree is, that's the first doorway. See, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 doorways. See? Mm. So 13 doorways representing the heavens. The heavens, and yeah. These doorways were specifically built like this for warfare reasons. So if mm. you were coming in from another city, wanted to invade, you would have never known which doorway to take. Okay? So right where you see these people behind, that is believed to have been the original doorway. And as soon as you got in there, we would have, they would have guards just yeah. guarding there, guarding or protect. So if you weren't allowed or had permission to enter into these staircases, they would strike you right back down. Okay. Second layer of construction where you see the stone arrangement and these like tree openings in the front. Okay. Believed to have been bedrooms from the middle class people. To the left of that, it has a frieze known as the West Frieze. 
and that's like the main part of this site mm. okay behind that we have the east freeze okay and it gives you an awesome view as you get to the very top of this structure wow okay the third layer of construction to the very top that's where the ruler or the king would always be okay so if i was a ruler ruling this city and after like 60 years i would have to mandatory build but for example if i was a ruler ruling this city and you come in uh, if you would come in trey as um this young cocky kid capture me and chop like off me. my head then i would no longer be the ruler you automatically become the ruler wow so then you would have to mandatory build this is how my structures got wider and higher here in belize wow okay we have excavation here at shenantanich going on more than a century ago okay. so archaeologists comes every year they would normally bring students from different universities and they get a chance to do like the actual excavation wow. okay so in a few years or a few more months it, it would be open to the general public okay. yeah and that's the pathway where people would come yes ma'am that would be like the original entrance and there we have king trey see at the very top <laughs> welcome to shenantanage <laughs> awesome man <laughs> So we're ready. Three, two, one to Belize. Awesome. In the time of the Mayans, as soon as you were born, especially in the royal family, they already knew that you would have been representing some type of royalty. So again, if you were King Trey at mm -hmm. this city, your kids would be like Queen or King as soon as they born. Or King Trey and Queen Krista. As soon as, as your kids born, you already know that they would be representing royalty. Hmm. In the time of the Mayans, as royalty, you would have to look different from the general public. Now, if you look at this guy here, he has like a flattened forehead mm -hmm. and his eyes are closer to the nose, see? So again, as a baby, as soon as you were born, they would normally take um, a headdress, place it on you, and that headdress would have like nubs tightening it in together. Wow. Eventually, your forehead grows up flattened in like a cone. They would then take the nub, look, uh, place it in the front. That way you start focusing on it. Eventually, your eyes stayed crossed like oh this guy here. See? Wow. So again, for the Mayans, if you were a male person, for the Mayans, they believed that for males, you were handsome. For the females, that you were beautiful. Hmm. So you would have to definitely look different from the general public. See? Wow. So this here is the image of Kinich Ahau, the sun god. And um, if you notice, his head is flattened in, the, no the nose, and then the eyes closer to the nose. So he's like sideways. The sun rises in the east, sets in the west. So right here, he's like representing, he's like welcoming the sun. See the sun rising right here? Mm -hmm. See that? So Kinich Ahau. One of the main gods here at Shenantanich. This is known as the West Freeze. All these that you're seeing here, these are all fiberglass on, and the originals is a meter and a half in for preservation reasons. Ah, okay. okay. So up top, I'm gonna send my laser up. Let's see if you can see it right here. You see it in the center? Yeah. Yeah. So over here we have a god known as the Pash God. P A X repre um, is representation or known as Pash. He represents the same saber tree. There's one here to the right and also one here to the left. See? Here we have the laser again. Yeah. See that, Krista? Okay. So, Pash God, left and right. To the left and right of those same two gods, we have what is known as the moon god. Okay, there's one right here. See? The moon god, the one that looks like with the U. Representation of the moon god. 
There's one here to the right, also one here to the left. See it, Krista? Yeah. Okay, you see the laser here? You see the laser? See it? Where the stone tablets are? Yeah. That look like the harps? See right here, there's one that looks like the U. Yeah, it looks like a U, Krista. See right beside the pond yeah, god? She's, yeah. A little bit more? Yeah. There's a U god. There's a U, see? Yeah. You see that? Yeah. And that's the moon god? That's the moon god. There's okay. one here on the left and also one here to the right. See it? So moon god, and right in the center we have Chok the rain god. Very important god. He How do you spell the name? Chalk. Chalk, C H A L K. Okay. Yeah. Like chalk. Yeah, chalk. Okay. Yeah, chalk the rain god. He brought rain so the corn and crops could grow. He was also a very jealous god. Okay? So if you were worshiping like the sun god or the moon god for more than chalk the rain god, he would send down rain for a couple of days, drowning all the plants. Gee. So you would then have to perform that same bloodletting sacrifice or offering. If that didn't work, this is when they start venturing into these cave systems, okay? Performing human offerings over to the to the gods, wow. asking them to send back the sun, asking them to send back the rain. Okay. And that's precisely what happened at the ATM cave, right? Yeah, that's what happened if, when you saw this little guy right there. Yeah. He was like a Mayan offering. Wow. Hey, O'Neill. See, he hurt you well. See, he's giving us the mill finger, yeah. man. He gives me a hard time. <laughs> but that's my buddy. So, I mean, you're hardly, I mean, you're not really speaking uh, that loud oh, no, at all. We're not even and because of the acoustics of this place, it's allowing you to almost speak at a normal tone Correct. and he can hear you all the way Crystal down there. Clear. That's you amazing. Know this, I said, oh, you know. That's amazing okay, for the like, date of this architecture, how smart these people were. Yeah, as soon as he's finished, he's going to start messing with us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're going to hear him crystal clear. Yeah. Oh, and if you great. notice, see the 13 doorways, Krista? No, she may not want to get close. No, don't worry, she can see from there. <laughs> can you see right there the little blocks? These were the 13 doorways representing the sky. Trey and Krista, where we're standing at, there's a couple things that we can see from in this corner here. For example, if we start looking back in this direction here, you look at this formation, you also look at the top, there's one here and one behind. There's like three opening here, see? And those opening, they're all known as the roofs from the Mayans. It is known as the core belt arch form. This is the only way that the Mayans knew to make their roof. They would make the roof these triangular form. If you notice, there's like a, there's like a opening in the center mm -hmm. and in that center they would have like beams to the very center of that again the mayans believe that when the sun sets the sun for them played two roles the sun would rise at 6 a.m shines through the daytime as soon as it sets by 7 p.m the mayans believe that the sun turns into a jaguar going into the mayan underworld known as shibaba defeating the mayan underworld guarding mm. protecting the evil okay in the center here, there's a god, see? You notice there's a guy with the mouth, mm -hmm. the nose, the eyes, and the forehead, and he has like a headdress. Mm -hmm. See, for the Mayans, again, the Mayans would know, this is known as a god's kawil. For the Mayans, rulers, they would wear headdresses. Headdresses, most of the time, would have the representation of, or the image of a jaguar. Again, for the Mayans, jaguar meant power. Here, there's two ball courts found here at Shenantanich. There's ball court one here and ball court two right behind. The Mayans weren't boring people. The Mayans played games. But uh, what happened with these games? The Mayans played for two reasons. For political and for friendly reasons. If you were playing the game for a friendly reason, as soon as you lost in that game, the loser would have to hand up the paddings over to the winner. Hmm. Now the ball game was played with um, paddings taken from bark of trees. The ball game is known as the Puck Chapuck -puck Ball Game. P O K T A P O K. Puck Chapuck. -puck. Okay? And the center of these um, structures here, you notice there's all grass on the left and right. Mm -hmm. These were all plastered limestone. See? All plastered limestone. And the center where you see the broken part right here, there was vertical hoops, one on the right and also one on the left. We would have spectators on left and right um, just witnessing the game. Hmm. In the time of the Mayans, when the Mayans played these ball games, for them, 
most of the time it was captives. You would find out that it's captives playing these Mayan ball game because the Mayans believe in life after death. The Mayans believe that if you were a captive and you would volunteer to play this game, that you would return into a second life as a free person. It never happened. It was just beliefs that the Mayan had. Hmm. So it is not sure how long these people would have been playing this game, but archaeologists believe um, from about 6 a.m. to about 9 p.m. or until somebody gets tired. It is not sure how many persons would have been playing this game, but archaeologists believe from two to three persons on one team. Hmm. Okay, So the ball game was played with a rubber ball believed to be eight to nine inch in diameter. And this rubber ball here would normally be taken from the rubber tree. Okay, So again, they would have paddings placed on the elbows, the hips, and also on the knees. So the Mayans, they weren't allowed to get a hold of this ball. The only time they would hold this ball would be at the start of the Mayan ball game. They would then have to get that ball into the hoops, the vertical hoops, using the elbows, the hips, and also the knees. So elbows, hips, and knees um, hitting the ball. So puck to puck Mayan ball game. Okay? The winner then gets sacrificed. Okay? I think if I was on this ball field here, I'd be throwing the game. Oh, yeah. I don't know if I'd want to be sacrificed. So to win, you would be sacrificed. Can you imagine how many professional athletes would not do that today? Not the kind of accolades that people want nowadays. Yeah. You win, you die. Oh, it feels great on the knees. That hike, man. <laughs> that was worse than that one. <laughs> That's because we're all. <sighs> See, this is why when when I do the tour, uh, most guides, we come up, hit the site from in this direction. That yeah. way, you're still fresh. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> At this point, you're like. <sighs> it's just the combination of. <laughs> The heat and then having to yeah. wear the mask. Correct, correct. Doesn't help. It's like breathing imagine, in your own carbon dioxide. Imagine imagine doing this tour twice. Oh, one dear day. Lord. Yeah. God bless you, man. One in the morning, one in the evening. Oh. <laughs> Same thing in the peak of the tourism season. It's like double trips. Sometimes I'm here in the morning, got to hit the cave in the afternoon. Sometimes I'm over at the cave with like eight persons. And, um, as soon as I get out, there's like a van load with eight more persons, so it's back in again. So here, on this burial here, this was excavated, like I mentioned, by our archaeologist, or only Belizean archaeologist, known as Dr. Jaime Awe. And there was an individual found in this specific tomb here, believed to be 5'8 to about 5, sorry, 5'2 five to about 5'3. And this individual was found with, with headdress. This is how mm. we know it's a high-class person. Yesterday was no ordinary tour for these tourists at Zunantunich. They crowded together beyond the yellow tape, looking on and snapping photos of the mound at the center of the site. But this structure was not the main attraction. It's what was found encased beneath. Lying five to eight meters deep is the first tomb ever discovered at Zunantunich and one of the largest ever found in Belize. Not far from him we found a skeleton remain believed to be the uh, remains from a jaguar or a deer. Hmm. For some reason they, they um, worship these animals, jaguar and deer, and there's broken pottery all around. Hmm. For the Mayans, the Mayans believe that everything had a life. So this is why if I was coming in trying to take over and you had like pottery, there's a way or a form that they would break up these pottery so that the life can finally end. Please don't lose my camera. <laughs> Thank you.
Thanks for traveling with Trey. If you enjoyed this virtual tour of Sunan Tunich, please leave a like, comment, and be sure to subscribe. Stay tuned for more videos from Belize.